Hello, welcome back. I'm Emily. And I'm Katie. And <laughs> that's not our intro. This is not our intro. <laughs> this is Through the Trap Door, a Harry Potter podcast where we read you Harry Potter fan fiction. Can you tell we haven't done this in a while? Uh, this is garbage. <laughs> We're going with it. We should, because I don't care that it was perfect in the recap episode. This is perfect. <laughs> Katie did the recap intro perfectly. I did mine. It was garbage. <laughs> Makes no sense. To be fair, I thought it was my turn to read. So I was like mentally saying it you were to preparing myself yourself? while I was driving here. I knew that it was my turn to read, but instead of, like, focusing on remembering what I needed to say, I was like, oh, I should, like, make sure I know what happened previously so that we can give a recap and, like, I need to, like, figure out who, like, turn it is to, like, read and just, like, know that information. And She did the logic sticks. The logic sticks? <laughs> yeah, I did that. <laughs> I just practiced in my car saying, welcome to Through the Trap Door. <laughs> uh, you know, I also, like, have a small child that I'm caring for. I know, you did way more work than I did for this. <laughs> and you have a human. To be fair, most of my prep work happened while I made Ben watch her and I took a shower. And I just, like, listened to our podcast in the shower. Hey, multitask. Yeah. I could have listened to the podcast on my drive up here. I chose to listen to Potterless. I am so far behind on all of my podcasts. Um, so I've forced myself to listen to podcasts and listen to a book the last, like, couple weeks of quarantine because I cannot sit in front of my television and watch the same eight episodes of Grey's Anatomy again. <laughs> Why not? I like how we did the recap episode so that we wouldn't ramble in the beginning of the next new episode, but here we are, 200 bars in, and, um... This is who we are. We're so bad at podcasting. We, we like, we like, is that it? Yeah, that's it. We find 200 more bars to ramble about. We're sorry. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> All right, would you like to start reading? Yeah, let's start this bad boy. Chapter 10, The Gamekeeper's Hut. I'm going to warn you now, it's been a long time since I've read anything aloud, so. Yeah, this is going to be a struggle. If y'all remember the beginning, think back to that. Yeah. Or maybe the beginning of just this season, because we also took like six weeks off then, too. Yeah. We're sorry. We're bad at podcasting. We are. This time we had a better excuse than last time. True. <laughs> this time it was... Forced separation. Forced separation and babies. And me not having a microphone at home, so we could not record separately. Yeah, also, you know, nine months pregnant, I wasn't really feeling like putting in a whole lot of effort. Yeah. And um, then newly having a baby. Because I was like, I was like, I can get a microphone and we can try to record this separately. And you're like, no. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Fair. <laughs> Fair. I'm like, I tried. <laughs> yeah, because like we could have, but by the time we went into quarantine, I was just like at the beginning of my ninth month of, month of pregnancy. Right, and we were at the point where we kind of already warned you guys that there might be several weeks without episodes. It just was a lot more yeah. than we expected. We didn't anticipate that your first new episode would be yeah. the first weekend of June. Yes. <laughs> I anticipated like maybe like first weekend, second weekend of May. Yeah, nope. No, no. Here we are. In June. Oh, well. Nah. You you get episodes now. If you were really bored, I hope you found a different podcast. A lot of them were doing lots of extra stuff. Yeah, and also, to be fair, our, like, one listener that we don't know who constantly keeps in contact with us also follows us on our personal social media. Shout out to you uh, for liking all of our posts. Yeah. Like, you're the best. <laughs> you're great, Amanda. We love you. We really do. <laughs> All right. It wasn't Lily's fault. It really wasn't. She hadn't meant to get into a fight with James. But if he insisted on acting immature, then Lily insisted on yelling at him for it. And it didn't help that the flaming tulips they'd been taking care of in the greenhouse had caught her hair on fire, and she was now looking rather singed. First of all, flaming tulips, yes. Second of all, put your hair in a ponytail if you're dealing with flaming tulips. Or a bun. 
safer. Maybe a hairnet or a hat. Also, don't you, you're a wizard. Don't you have, like, fireproof magic that you can put on your hair? I would hope so, because burning hair is the worst. Yeah. It feels bad. It smells bad. It's just gross all around. Ugh. All right. No, that certainly hadn't helped, but James had been looking altogether too perky, and Lily had been altogether too disgruntled, and sneaking up behind Lily with a filibuster's wet start, no heat, firework, and setting it off had not been the wise decision on James's part. So it wasn't Lily's fault that half the students in the sixth year had witnessed her yelling at him on the front steps and telling him that she had absolutely no patience for useless fireworks or useless boys who insisted on setting them off right above her head and that she would be very happy to turn him in to Mr. Filch for detention. Lily had chosen to close this wonderful conversation with the sentiment that she would very much like to see James go off into the forbidden forest, get lost, and never come back again. <laughs> Lily really wasn't having a good start to the term. I don't know. That's like grade A insult. What are Lily and James arguing about now? Serious black ass elbowing through the large crowd in the front hall in an effort to catch up with Melody Caldwell. Who knows, Melody said over her shoulder, shrugging. She was easily five steps ahead of Sirius, gliding through the crowd as though it was made of water. Well, you're Lily's best friend. I thought you'd at least have some idea. Sirius cut off as he was sideswiped by a group of first years, most of whom only came up to his waist. Sirius, stop playing with the children, Melody said, exasperated, looking up from her bag, in which she had been looking for a mirror. Sirius stumbled over to her, looking winded. That was dignified, Melody said, amused, taking a quick glance around before summoning a mirror from the depths of her bag. You know, technically, I should take points from our house for that, Sirius said, frowning. Technically, I should be taking points from myself, Melody replied, fliffing her hair and perfecting her makeup. But, oh well, she shrugged, clicked the compact clothes, and dropped it into her bag. Since when did you become so concerned with makeup, Sirius demanded as they began their ascent to Gryffindor Tower. Are you suggesting that there was a time when I wasn't obsessed with my appearance? Yes, Sirius said immediately. Melody looked up at him, surprised, and he shook his head at the generous amounts of eye makeup she had layered on. Last year, he said, last year you never wore makeup. You even ate those magical suckers that turned your hair blue. You haven't had one of those in months. Melody tore her gaze away from Sirius and stared at the floor as they reached the top of the stairs. She could feel him staring at her and felt that if she were to meet his eyes, he would find all the flaws in her carefully woven web of lies, insecure smiles, and caked on beauty that connected to the truth in very few places and had taken her six months of laboring to create. In six months, Melody had painstakingly transformed herself into the kind of twittering idi idiot she had always hated, looked down upon, and feared becoming. And now, she'd become one. She, in a weird, twisted, sick sort of way, liked it. Hmm. She didn't have to worry anymore. She didn't have to try so hard. Hell, she didn't even have to really think. Well, okay, she did have to think, but... It was a different kind of thinking. It was shallow and flirty and sly and cunning in a greedy sort of way. It was a race, sort of, between all the girls there to land the richest, smartest, and most formidable, the handsome, the most powerful, both magically and in the mis ministry, husband. Unfortunately for most of the twittering idiots at the parties, however, the Minister of Magic's son was nowhere to be found. Melody had occasionally wondered why James never came to high society functions, but then figured the minister was probably too busy to come with his family and that Mrs. Potter didn't want to go without him. It wasn't as though they weren't invited. You know, that is a fair assumption because I wouldn't go. Yeah, no, I wouldn't go without him. I don't care how high society I am in these functions. I'm like, I ain't going without my husband regardless of 
if my son's friends are also there, I'm like, no. Because I wouldn't want to deal with those people. Yeah. No. I get it. But back to the matter at hand. How was it that Sirius always managed to see right through her? It wasn't fair. She'd managed to fool everyone else except Luke. But she didn't want to think about Luke. She still felt humiliated. She was just glad her uncle had managed to cover up the scandal and had offered to take her to America for the summer. Look, Sirius, people change. They grow up. It happens. Just get over it. Melody picked up her pace and Sirius hurried after her. She could feel him staring at her. It was rather unnerving, actually. She stopped and whirled around to face him, opening her mouth to demand that he stop staring at her, but instead shrank under his gaze, closed her mouth, and leaned rather meekly against the wall. Sirius glared at her hard and evaluated her for a moment. Bullshit, he said angrily. This isn't just you glowing up. This is you completely changing who you are so you'll fit in better at those ridiculous society functions, and it is disgusting. To be fair, it said growing up, but I felt glowing up was more appropriate. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Melody stared at the ground as huge pink spots blossomed in her cheeks. Melody, don't do this to yourself, Sirius said softly. There's enough confusion inside you as it is, with your drive for revenge pulling you one way and your drive to seem perfectly normal pulling you the other. You don't need to create a fake you to escape from it all. That's a better picture. <laughs> <laughs> Melody narrowed her eyes. Was he right? Was that what she was doing? Oh, what did it matter? What did Sirius know about her life anyway? What right did he have to tell her what to do or not to do? He didn't have to live her life. He was practically handed to him on a silver platter, damn it, and she wasn't for one second going to let him make her feel guilty for trying to get a little bit ahead in the world using the one thing that she really had, beauty. She glared up at him and straightened her shoulders. What do you know about it, Sirius? She asked nastily. It's my business, what I do, not yours. And just keep that nose of yours out of it. Melody shoved him aside angrily and stalked down the hallway alone, unsuccessfully trying to suppress the lump rising in her throat and the tears burning in her eyes. Oh, damn it all to hell, she cursed herself, ducking into the nearest bathroom to dry her eyes. Stupid! Lily cried, tossing the pillow she'd been holding on the floor angrily. She was pacing around the girl's dormitory, feeling quite angry and humiliated and stupid and rather unnecessarily upset about what happened between her and James. Stupid, 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 James is stupid! Amelia Atkins, who had just been about to step into the dormitory to grab a book, froze, looked at Lily, thought for a moment, then turned around and left the room, shutting the door securely behind her. Ah! Lily yelled in frustration. She stormed over to the window seat and sat down in a huff, crossing her arms and staring out the window moodily. Oh, damn these teenage hormones. Honestly, she was 16. She didn't have to react, overreact like this all the time. She focused on a person walking across the Hogwarts grounds, not so much because she was interested in who they were or what they were doing, but because she was angry and needed something to focus on. The person walked around in a large circle, then towards the greenhouses, then doubled back, then walked in a large circle again, then picked up several snowballs and threw them in the general direction of the school, then walked in a large circle for several minutes, kicking up snow quite furiously. Then he turned and began walking decisively towards the edge of the school grounds. It took Lily to m a moment to realize she'd identified the person as a he, or who in fact that he was. It was James. Lily realized suddenly, and he... Oh, curse that stupid idiotic Pratt. He was headed right for the Forbidden Forest. At first, Lily was just angrier. Oh, just let him go in there and die. What did, what did she care if he died? She froze for a moment, thinking, The Forbidden Forest, it was dangerous, and full of deadly creatures, and all kinds of horrible things, and James, James was headed straight towards it, straight towards impending danger and death. Oh, hell now, Lily sounded like a ditzy heroine in a rona romance novel. Seriously, it was those hormones talking. But ridiculous hormones or not, it would be Lily's fault if James got hurt. 
If he went into the Forbidden Forest and never came back, if he... he... James, you idiot, she yelled. Those thoughts alone were enough to propel her out of the window seat, through the entrance of the Ravenclaw common room, all the way downstairs, out the front doors, and halfway across the front lawn. Lily's heart beat faster and faster as she propelled herself across the grounds, caking up snow, ignoring both the bitter cold and the fact that she had stupidly forgotten her cloak. She could see James up ahead, still stalking angrily towards the Forbidden Forest. James! Lily cried once she was within hearing distance, and James glanced over his shoulder, glaring at her, and then continued stubbornly towards the forest. James, you idiot! She yelled at him, gaining on him. He didn't acknowledge the insult. James, stop! Lily cried, finally catching up to him. She slowed down, panting, caught his arm, and tried to tug him to go halt, but it didn't work. He pulled his arm out of her grasp and continued walking. Oh, come on, James. I wasn't serious, Lily insisted, trying to get him to look her in the eyes. She skipped in front of him and turned around, walking backwards so she could face him. Please stop, James, she begged. I don't want you to go off and get hurt or, or worse just because we had some stupid fight. And will you please look at me? Lily asked, pained. James refused to look at her, and Lily felt her heart sinking as they got closer and closer to the Forbidden Forest. James, Lily began, but she didn't finish her sentence because just then she tripped over a tree root buried in the snow, shrieked, and began falling backwards. James caught her instinctively and bo kept both arms wrapped securely around Lily's waist as she steadied herself. Lily looked up at him, and his gaze finally met hers, lowering his arms to his side again. James, I... Lily began. Shut up, Lily, James said, shaking his head and smiling at her. Lily narrowed her eyes. Why are you so happy? Because my girlfriend is an idiot. I'm not your girlfriend. Oh, I thought you were going to say that you weren't an idiot. But as long as you're not denying the obvious, then it's okay then. I'm not an idiot either. <laughs> sure you are, James said, smiling. You're not wearing a cloak. I... Lily considered that for a moment. Yeah, well, so... She retorted. James laughed. At least I didn't decide to go into the Forbidden Forest. Hey, you told me to go in there. I did not. I said I'd like to see you go in there and never come back again. That's not the same thing. James snorted. Sure it isn't, Lily. No, it's not. I'm glad you agree. You know what, Lily? I think you like arguing. I do. She paused for a moment. Well, she shrugged. And then shivered. I'm sorry, she said. After a moment, I didn't mean it. And you know what? You know that, right? James looked down at her for a minute and then gave her a lopsided grin. Yeah, I know. I just wanted to see if you'd notice if I tried to go. James! Lily punched him lightly on the shoulder and frowned for a second. Give me a hug, Lily said softly, wrapping her arms around his neck. James complied easily, wrapping his arms around her waist again, giving her a good tight squeeze. Lily leaned back and looked at James for a minute, stroking his cheek with her thumb almost absently, and then she did something very unchar uncharacteristic. She kissed him. It's not very uncharacteristic. As it would be uncharacteristic if you don't slap him. True. Let's find out. <laughs> Lily really was a very good kisser. James often overlooked this in light of the fact that she rarely kissed him. He was always the one kissing her to, you, you're kissing each other. That's not... Yeah, it's not a one-way street. Uh, I mean, one person does have to initiate yes. said kiss, but then once the kiss has started, you're kissing each other. Yes. If you were just kissing her and she's, like, dead-lipping you, move on. Yeah, the, there's probably a reason she slapped you if she's dead-lipping you. James tipped her chin, chin up with his finger and kissed her furiously just enough so that it shocked her for a second, and she loosened her grip around his waist. He whipped off his cloak before she could object and placed it around her shoulders. She didn't argue, but instead wrapped the cloak tightly around herself, and she gave him a kiss on the cheek. James responded with another full-on kiss, which actually rendered him rather senseless for a few moments, and as a result, he didn't hear the voices yelling at him until Lily had broken the kiss. James, she whispered, looking over his shoulder, her eyes very wide. James turned around to see the large form of Hagrid, the gamekeeper, standing in the snow in front of his hut, looking rather annoyed. Oi, what are you two doing? Are you out of your blooming minds? Um, perhaps? 
James replied, smiling devilishly. Hagrid, to Lily's surprise, rolled his eyes. I should have known it'd be you, James. It must be you, Lily. He said, nodding in the girls in James's arms. She blinked and nodded. Look, we rather startled. James talks about you all the time, Hagrid said, smiling. James sincerely hoped his ears were already too red from the wind for Lily to notice how warm they were becoming. Well, you lot look good and frozen. Come in here and have a spot of tea before you go back up to school, Hagrid offered, motioning towards the cabin. Please note that it is written in Hagrid's actual accent. I just can't do that. Not, not about to happen. Yep, and whenever I have to read Hagrid, which I'm sure I will in the future, now looking as though James spends an awful lot of time with Hagrid. Apparently. Uh, I will also read it as myself and not as Hagrid. Er, come on then, James said, releasing his hold on Lily but tugging her hand. And Lily, looking rather unsure, nodded. They delved through the snow together towards the hut, hands intertwined, and welcomed the pleasant warmth of its interior as they stepped inside. Back, Fang, Hagrid said, and so Fang probably wouldn't be alive. At least not in both. Like, I know he's a magical dog, but it, that's still but a very he? long time. True, he is just a... Uh, he's described as a boarhound, which is a breed of dog. So he might not actually be magical. In that case, definitely not alive. Unless he's like... No, because... I'm sorry. So, unless Fang's like literally 35 years old, that dog is not that old. No, there's no way Fang is alive. Sorry. Well, we can pretend he's magical, though. He's a magical boarhound. Cool, cool, cool. Back, Fang, Hagrid said, and James could see him trying to restrain his pet, a rather young but still extremely large boarhound who looked rather excited at the prospect of visitors. Ooh, puppy, Lily said, letting go of James's hand and dropping to her knees to pet Fang. James blinked and looked at her as though she was rather insane, Hagrid beaming intensely. You like Fang, then? I was afraid some of the students wouldn't take me having such a large pet. Oh no, he's wonderful, Lily assured him, scratching Fang's ears. James shook his head, incredulous, and plopped down in Hagrid's large chair situated near the fireplace where a cheery fire was crackling in the grate. I like when fire is described as cheery. <laughs> me too. <laughs> well, I'll just make tea then, Hagrid said, humming as he fixed a pot. Lily was now attempting to teach Fang to sit, shake, and roll over. James shook his head again at her, still looking amazed. Sometimes I just don't understand you, he muttered. Lily looked over her, shul her shoulder at him and frowned. What? I like dogs. What? Would you not look at me like that, please? All right, you two, that's enough. Hagrid intervened, setting down several cups of tea and a plate of what looked like treacle fudge on a small table between James's chair and the sofa. After patting Fang's head enthusiastically, Lily bounded over to the couch and sat down, seizing a cup of tea, looking more enthusiastic that, than James could ever remember seeing her. Fang followed, wagging his tail, eagerly sitting down next to her, setting his head on her lap and drooling all over her rope. So how come you never brought Lily to see me before, James? Hagrid asked, sitting down next to Lily on the couch, having his own cup of tea. James felt rather panicked, but Lily shrugged and set down her cup of tea. Well, we he wasn't really in a position to introduce me before now, was he? I mean, he didn't really get to know me until sometime last year, she informed Hagrid, seizing a bit of fudge. So he didn't really have the chance. Well, I certainly remember he talked about you, Hagrid said, chuckling as Lily picked up her teacup again. And after you poured that pumpkin juice on his head, he couldn't stop thinking about you for weeks, and then Hagrid cut off, noticing James' horrified expression. <laughs> I like that this Hagrid is still just talking way too much. Yep. In the best way possible. Lily was staring at James, very wide-eyed, over her cup of tea, which was frozen mid-sip. Is that right? she asked, setting the tea down, looking extremely interested in hearing the rest of Hagrid's antidote. Please continue. Er, care for a bit of fudge, James? Hagrid said abruptly, looking rather flustered. James accepted happily and shoved the rather large bite of fudge into his mouth, an action which he immediately regretted as now his jaws were firmly clamped together and he was having a bit of trouble chewing. You never accept food from Hagrid. Never. Oh, don't change the subject. 
The one we're on is fascinating, Lily said as she looked at Hagrid expectantly. Care for a bit more tea there, Lily? <laughs> Lily sighed and rolled her eyes, taking another sip. No, I'm fine, thank you, she said, sounding rather disappointed. James, through his mouthful of fudge, managed to heave a sigh of relief. Lily glared at him as she drained the rest of her teacup. James glanced nervously at his watch. I think we should be going back to school, he said, talking through the fudge and managing to swallow a bit of it. Lily glanced at her own watch and nodded. Well, thank you for the tea, she said, standing and nodding at Hagrid. Oh, it's nothing, Hagrid assured her. You can come by any time and see Fang. Lily smiled. I would like that, she said as James rose and finally finished eating his fudge. They said goodbye and left the cabin. As they began walking back up to the school, Lily turned to James with a raised eyebrow. Been talking about me, James? <laughs> James colored a bit and shrugged, running a hand through his hair, purposely making it stick up so he looked rather windswept. Well, there was only so much to say about Quidditch, you know. Lily laughed. I find that hard to believe coming from you, and quit doing that to your hair. It looks stupid. James frowned, flattening his hair again. That girl, honestly. <laughs> Lily sat in the library, hunched over a foot-long roll of parchment, which we've established is half an inch longer than a regular sheet of printer paper. Which is really not that long. I just like bringing that up every time. I always forget. I'm like, oh my god, that's so long. And then I'm like, wait, wait, no. That's just a regular sheet of paper. Yep. Because, let's be honest, it's a half inch longer. Therefore, what? One more line than a regular single page? Yep. Because you still need a heading. You can really, if you write big enough. Scribbling away madly her potions essay, The Uses of Gilly Reed in Potion Making. Surrounded by several large piles of books, three already finished essays, one of them still glistening with wet ink, several quills, two inkwells, and a small pile of bite-sized Honeyduke's chocolate hidden under small crumpled rolls of parchment. In case Madame Prince swooped by to make sure Lily wasn't defacing any of her precious books. Good God, woman, it's the middle of January. Exams aren't for another six months. Snap out of it. Lily frowned and looked up from her essay, annoyed to see Sirius Black standing over her. She rolled her eyes and returned to the paper, ignoring him. No, I'm serious, Sirius said. Lily <laughs> rolled her eyes again, not lifting her quill from the parchment. You need to get out more, experience some fresh air, drop a dung bomb or two. Serious, Lily said, but he ignored her. Knock over a suit of armor, terrorize some first year. Serious. Fall asleep in class. Serious. Get a detention or two. Serious! Randomly lock doors as you walk down corridors. Serious! Sneak into Hogsmeade. Buy a few butterbeer. Serious! What? Lily sighed and looked up at him, exasperated. I'm trying to do my homework. Would you please leave me alone? Oh, homework. That. Sirius said, surveying the books and papers strewn around her. Instead of leaving, however, he pulled out a chair across from Lily and sat in it moving several piles of books aside so he could see her properly. This is what I'm talking about, Lily, he said, surveying all of Lily's study material. You need to let homework go. Relax. Enjoy yourself. Watch a little Quidditch. Lily raised an eyebrow. Quidditch? Serious. The next game isn't for another week and a half. So you can get the Wizarding Wireless Network inside Hogwarts. You could listen to a professional match. Lily rolled her eyes and shook her head, leaning over the parchment. Serious, I really don't care that much for Quidditch, she informed him, scribbling down a few words. I do, however, care about homework, which I believe I've mentioned before. Sirius did not speak for several moments, which suited Lily just fine, as she had time to scribble out a final sentence to her essay during the silence. She stacked all of her essay into a neat pile and then glanced up at Sirius, who was staring at her Eyes wide, mouth open, closing like a fish. Not, not, not like Quidditch? He sputtered. How, 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 why, how is that possible? Lily sighed. Serious? You know perfectly well how it's possible. I don't have time for this. Why not? Got a hot date? Can't have more homework, can you? He said, looking around, rather horrified at the thought. Lily smiled in spite, her, in spite of herself. No, serious, I do not have more homework, but I am going to help some third years with theirs. So, like I said, I need you to leave me alone. 
Hmm. Sirius said, I see how it is. He glared at her for a moment, then shrugged. Well, I guess I'll be getting out of here then if there's going to be more work done, he said, shuddering. Bye, Sirius, Lily said as Sirius stood, clearing some of her books off the table and tucking her finished essays neatly into a deep blue folder, which she dropped into her bottomless bag. Bye, Sirius said, pushing the chair in. Don't work yourself too hard, Lily Bean, he called over his left shoulder. Lily stomped her foot indignantly, but didn't yell after him not to call her Lily Bean, because she really didn't feel like getting kicked out of the library today. Sirius shot her a devilish grin before ducking out of the library. She glared at him for a moment, and then sighed and finished clearing off the table. She rather doubted Wendy and Lynn would need advanced transfiguration or a scholar's guide to arithmetic level four. So that's the end of this episode. That's the end of this episode. We'll see you guys next week. Yes. See you next week. We're back at it. Yay. Woo-hoo! Thank you so much for joining us on our journey through the trap door. Please leave us a review on Facebook or iTunes. It would literally mean the world to us. It really would. Uh, You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at ThroughTheTrapDoor16 or on Twitter at TheTrapDoor. And please send us an email at ThroughTheTrapDoor16 at gmail.com with any story suggestions. And as always, join us again next Saturday as we travel through the trapdoor.